Carbon nanotubes CNTs are allotropes of carbon with a cylindrical nanostructure. These cylindrical carbon molecules have unusual properties, which are valuable for nanotechnology, electronics, optics, and other fields of materials science and technology. Owing to the material's exceptional strength and stiffness, nanotubes have been constructed with a length-to-diameter ratio of up to 132 million to 1, significantly larger than that for any other material. In addition, owing to their extraordinary thermal conductivity and mechanical and electrical properties, carbon nanotubes find applications as additives to various structural materials. For instance, nanotubes form a tiny portion of the materials in some primarily carbon fiber, baseball bats, golf clubs, car parts, or Damascus steel. Nanotubes are members of the fullerene structural family. Their name is derived from their long, hollow structure with the walls formed by one atom thick sheets of carbon, called graphene, as well as Buckminster Fuller's name. These sheets are rolled at specific and discrete chiral angles, and the combination of the rolling angle and radius decides the nanotube properties, for example, whether the individual nanotube shell is a metal or semiconductor. Nanotubes are categorized as single-walled nanotubes SWNTs and multi-walled nanotubes MWNTs. Individual nanotubes naturally align themselves into ropes held together by van der Waals forces, more specifically, pi stacking. Applied quantum chemistry, specifically orbital hybridization, best describes the chemical bonding in nanotubes. The chemical bonding of nanotubes involves entirely sp2 hybrid carbon atoms. These bonds, which are similar to those of graphite and stronger than those found in alkanes and diamond which employ sp3 hybrid carbon atoms, provide nanotubes their unique strength. <laughs> Topic. Types of carbon nanotubes and related structures There is no consensus on some terms describing carbon nanotubes in scientific literature, both wall and walled are being used in combination with single, double, triple, or multi, and the letter C is often omitted in the abbreviation, for example, multi-walled carbon nanotube MWNT. Topic. Single walled D equals a pi N two plus N M plus M two equals seventy eight point three N plus M two minus N M P M Display style D equals FRAC O pi SQRT N carrot two plus N M plus M carrot two equals seventy eight point three SQRT N plus M carrot two N M erm PM where equals 0.246 nanometers. SWNTs are an important variety of carbon nanotubes because most of their properties change significantly with the N, M values, and this dependence is non-monotonic In particular, their band gap can vary from 0 to about 2 electron volts and their electrical conductivity can show metallic or semiconducting behavior. Single-walled nanotubes are likely candidates for miniaturizing electronics. The most basic building block of these systems is an electric wire, and SWNTs with diameters of an order of a nanometer can be excellent conductors. One useful application of SWNTs is in the development of the first intermolecular field effect transistors FET. 
The first intermolecular logic gate using SWCNT FETs was made in 2001. A logic gate requires both a PFET and an N-FET. Because SWNTs are PFETs when exposed to oxygen and N-FETs otherwise, it is possible to expose half of an SWNT to oxygen and protect the other half from it. The resulting SWNT acts as a not logic gate with both P and N-type FETs in the same molecule. Prices for single-walled nanotubes declined from around $1,500 per gram as of 2000 to retail prices of around $50 per gram of as produced 40-60% by weight SWNTs as of March 2010. As of 2016, the retail price of as produced 75% by weight SWNTs was $2 per gram, cheap enough for widespread use. SWNTs are forecast to make a large impact in electronics applications by 2020 according to the Global Market for Carbon Nanotubes report. I Topic: Multi-walled Multi-walled nanotubes MWNTs consist of multiple rolled layers concentric tubes of graphene. There are two models that can be used to describe the structures of multi-walled nanotubes. In the Russian doll model, sheets of graphite are arranged in concentric cylinders, e.g., a 0, 8 single-walled nanotube SWNT within a larger 0, 17 single-walled nanotube. In the parchment model, a single sheet of graphite is rolled in around itself, resembling a scroll of parchment or a rolled newspaper. The interlayer distance in multi-walled nanotubes is close to the distance between graphene layers in graphite, approximately 3.4 a. The Russian doll structure is observed more commonly. Its individual shells can be described as SWNTs, which can be metallic or semiconducting. Because of statistical probability and restrictions on the relative diameters of the individual tubes, one of the shells, and thus the whole MWNT, is usually a zero-gap metal. Double-walled carbon nanotubes DWNTs, form a special class of nanotubes because their morphology and properties are similar to those of SWNTs but they are more resistant to chemicals. This is especially important when it is necessary to graft chemical functions to the surface of the nanotubes functionalization to add properties to the CNT. Covalent functionalization of SWNTs will break some C equals C double bonds, leaving holes in the structure on the nanotube and thus modifying both its mechanical and electrical properties. In the case of DWNTs, only the outer wall is modified. DWNT synthesis on the gram scale by the CCVD technique was first proposed in 2003 from the selective reduction of oxide solutions in methane and hydrogen. The telescopic motion ability of inner shells and their unique mechanical properties will permit the use of multi-walled nanotubes as the main movable arms in upcoming nanomechanical devices. The retraction force that occurs to telescopic motion is caused by the Leonard-Jones interaction between shells, and its value is about 1.5 nanonewtons. Topic. Junctions and crosslinking Junctions between two or more nanotubes have been widely discussed theoretically. Such junctions are quite frequently observed in samples prepared by arc discharge as well as by chemical vapor deposition. The electronic properties of such junctions were first considered theoretically by Lambin et al., who pointed out that a connection between a metallic tube and a semiconducting one would represent a nanoscale heterojunction. Such a junction could therefore form a component of a nanotube-based electronic circuit. The adjacent image shows a junction between two multiwalled nanotubes. 
Junctions between nanotubes and graphene have been considered theoretically but not widely studied experimentally. Such junctions form the basis of pillared graphene, in which parallel graphene sheets are separated by short nanotubes. Pillared graphene represents a class of three-dimensional carbon nanotube architectures. Recently, several studies have highlighted the prospect of using carbon nanotubes as building blocks to fabricate three-dimensional macroscopic greater than 100 nanometers in all three dimensions all carbon devices. Lawani et al. have reported a novel radical-initiated thermal crosslinking method to fabricate macroscopic, freestanding, porous, all-carbon scaffolds using single and multi-walled carbon nanotubes as building blocks. These scaffolds possess macro, micro, and nano-structured pores, and the porosity can be tailored for specific applications. These 3D all-carbon scaffolds, architectures may be used for the fabrication of the next generation of energy storage, supercapacitors, field emission transistors, high-performance catalysis, photovoltaics, and biomedical devices and implants. Topic Other morphologies Carbon nanobuds are a newly created material combining two previously discovered allotropes of carbon, carbon nanotubes and fullerenes. In this new material, fullerene-like buds are covalently bonded to the outer sidewalls of the underlying carbon nanotube. This hybrid material has useful properties of both fullerenes and carbon nanotubes. In particular, they have been found to be exceptionally good field emitters. In composite materials, the attached fullerene molecules may function as molecular anchors preventing slipping of the nanotubes, thus improving the composite's mechanical properties. A carbon peapod is a novel hybrid carbon material which traps fullerene inside a carbon nanotube. It can possess interesting magnetic properties with heating and irradiation. It can also be applied as an oscillator during theoretical investigations and predictions. In theory, a nanotorus is a carbon nanotube bent into a torus donut shape. Nanotori are predicted to have many unique properties, such as magnetic moments 1,000 times larger than that previously expected for certain specific radii. Properties such as magnetic moment, thermal stability, etc. vary widely depending on the radius of the torus and the radius of the tube. Graphenated carbon nanotubes are a relatively new hybrid that combines graphitic foliates grown along the sidewalls of multi walled or bamboo style CNTs. The foliate density can vary as a function of deposition conditions e.g., temperature and time with their structure ranging from a few layers of graphene. Topic. Extreme carbon nanotubes The observation of the longest carbon nanotubes grown so far, one over half a meter 550 millimeters long, was reported in 2013. These nanotubes were grown on silicon substrates using an improved chemical vapor deposition CVD, method and represent electrically uniform arrays of single-walled carbon nanotubes. The shortest carbon nanotube is the organic compound cycloparaphenylene, which was synthesized in 2008. The thinnest carbon nanotube is the armchair 2-2 CNT with a diameter of 0.3 nanometers. This nanotube was grown inside a multi-walled carbon nanotube. Assigning of the carbon nanotube type was done by a combination of high-resolution transmission electron microscopy HRTEM, Raman spectroscopy, and density functional theory DFT calculations. The thinnest freestanding single-walled carbon nanotube is about 0.43 nanometers in diameter. Researchers suggested that it can be either 5, 1, or 4, 2 SWCNT, but the exact type of the carbon nanotube remains questionable. 3, 3, 4, 3, and 5, 1 carbon nanotubes, all about 0.4 nanometers in diameter, were unambiguously identified using aberration corrected high resolution transmission electron microscopy inside double walled CNTs. The highest density of CNTs 
was achieved in 2013, grown on a conductive titanium-coated copper surface that was coated with co-catalysts cobalt and molybdenum at lower than typical temperatures of 450 degrees Celsius. The tubes averaged a height of 380 nanometers and a mass density of 1.6 g cm-3. The material showed ohmic conductivity, lowest resistance 22 kilo ohms. Topic: <laughs> Properties. Topic: <laughs> Mechanical Carbon nanotubes are the strongest and stiffest materials yet discovered in terms of tensile strength and elastic modulus. This strength results from the covalent sp2 bonds formed between the individual carbon atoms. In 2000, a multiwalled carbon nanotube was tested to have a tensile strength of 63 GPa 9,100,000 psi. For illustration, this translates into the ability to endure tension of a weight equivalent to 6,422 kg force, 62,980 n, 14,160 lbf on a cable with cross section of 1 square millimeter, 0.001 six square in. Further studies, such as one conducted in 2008, revealed that individual CNT shells have strengths of up to approximately equals 100 GPa 15 million psi, which is in agreement with quantum, atomistic models. Because carbon nanotubes have a low density for a solid of 1.3 to 1.4 grams per cc, its specific strength of up to 48,000 kilonewtons m kilogram minus one is the best of known materials compared to high carbon steels 154 kilonewtons m kilogram minus one. Although the strength of individual CNT shells is extremely high, weak shear interactions between adjacent shells and tubes lead to significant reduction in the effective strength of multiwalled carbon nanotubes and carbon nanotube bundles down to only a few GPA. This limitation has been recently addressed by applying high-energy electron irradiation, which crosslinks inner shells and tubes, and effectively increases the strength of these materials to approximately equals 60 GPa for multiwalled carbon nanotubes and approximately equals 17 GPa for double-walled carbon nanotube bundles. CNTs are not nearly as strong under compression. Because of their hollow structure and high aspect ratio, they tend to undergo buckling when placed under compressive, torsional, or bending stress. On the other hand, there was evidence that in the radial direction they are rather soft. The first transmission electron microscope observation of radial elasticity suggested that even van der Waals forces can deform two adjacent nanotubes. Later, nanoindentations with an atomic force microscope were performed by several groups to quantitatively measure radial elasticity of multiwalled carbon nanotubes and tapping. Contact mode atomic force microscopy was also performed on single walled carbon nanotubes. Young's modulus of on the order of several GPA showed that CNTs are in fact very soft in the radial direction. Topic. Electrical Unlike graphene, which is a two-dimensional semimetal, carbon nanotubes are either metallic or semiconducting along the tubular axis. For a given n, m nanotube, if n equals m, the nanotube is metallic, if n minus m is a multiple of 3 and n does not equal m and n m does not equal 0, then the nanotube is quasi-metallic with a very small band gap, otherwise the nanotube is a moderate semiconductor. Thus, all armchair n equals m nanotubes are metallic, and nanotubes 6, 4, 9, 1, etc. are semiconducting. 
Carbon nanotubes are not semimetallic because the degenerate point, the point where the pi bonding band meets the pi asterisk anti-bonding band, at which the energy goes to zero, is slightly shifted away from the K point in the Brillouin zone because of the curvature of the tube surface, causing hybridization between the sigma asterisk and pi asterisk anti-bonding bands, modifying the band dispersion. The rule regarding metallic versus semiconductor behavior has exceptions because curvature effects in small diameter tubes can strongly influence electrical properties. Thus, a 5,0 SWCNT that should be semiconducting in fact is metallic according to the calculations. Likewise, zigzag and chiral SWCNTs with small diameters that should be metallic have a finite gap armchair nanotubes remain metallic. In theory, metallic nanotubes can carry an electric current density of 4 times 109 a per square centimeter, which is more than 1,000 times greater than those of metals such as copper, where for copper interconnects, current densities are limited by electromigration. Carbon nanotubes are thus being explored as interconnects and conductivity enhancing components in composite materials, and many groups are attempting to commercialize highly conducting electrical wire assembled from individual carbon nanotubes. There are significant challenges to be overcome however, such as undesired current saturation under voltage, and the much more resistive nanotube-to-nanotube -nanotube junctions and impurities, all of which lower the electrical conductivity of the macroscopic nanotube wires by orders of magnitude, as compared to the conductivity of the individual nanotubes. Because of its nanoscale cross-section, electrons propagate only along the tube's axis. As a result, carbon nanotubes are frequently referred to as one-dimensional conductors. The maximum electrical conductance of a single-walled carbon nanotube is 2 GO, where G0 equals 2 times 10 to the 2 per hours is the conductance of a single ballistic quantum channel, because of the role of the pi electron system in determining the electronic properties of graphene. Doping in carbon nanotubes differs from that of bulk crystalline semiconductors from the same group of the periodic table, e.g., silicon. Graphitic substitution of carbon atoms in the nanotube wall by boron or nitrogen dopants leads to p-type and n-type behavior, respectively, as would be expected in silicon. However, some non-substitutional intercalated or adsorbed dopants introduced into a carbon nanotube, such as alkali metals and electron-rich metallocenes, result in n-type conduction because they donate electrons to the pi electron system of the nanotube. By contrast, pi electron acceptors such as iron 3 chloride or electron deficient metallocenes function as p type dopants because they draw pi electrons away from the top of the valence band. Intrinsic superconductivity has been reported, although other experiments found no evidence of this, leaving the claim a subject of debate. Topic. Optical Carbon nanotubes have useful absorption, photoluminescence, fluorescence, and Raman spectroscopy properties. Spectroscopic methods offer the possibility of quick and non-destructive characterization of relatively large amounts of carbon nanotubes. There is a strong demand for such characterization from the industrial point of view. Numerous parameters of nanotube synthesis can be changed, intentionally or unintentionally, to alter the nanotube quality. As shown below, optical absorption, photoluminescence, and Raman spectroscopies allow quick and reliable characterization of this nanotube quality. In terms of non-tubular carbon content, structure chirality of the produced nanotubes, and structural defects. These features determine nearly any other properties such as optical, mechanical, and electrical properties. Carbon nanotubes are unique, one-dimensional systems, which can be envisioned as rolled single sheets of graphite or more precisely graphene. This rolling can be done at different angles and curvatures resulting in different nanotube properties. 
the diameter typically varies in the range 0.4 to 40 nanometers i.e. only approximately 100 times but the length can vary approximately 100 billion times from 0.14 nanometers to 55.5 centimeters the nanotube aspect ratio or the length to diameter ratio can be as high as 132 million to 1 which is unequaled by any other material Consequently, all the properties of the carbon nanotubes relative to those of typical semiconductors are extremely anisotropic directionally dependent and tunable. Whereas mechanical, electrical, and electrochemical supercapacitor properties of the carbon nanotubes are well established and have immediate applications, the practical use of optical properties is yet unclear. The aforementioned tunability of properties is potentially useful in optics and photonics. In particular, light-emitting diodes LEDs, and photodetectors based on a single nanotube have been produced in the lab. Their unique feature is not the efficiency, which is yet relatively low, but the narrow selectivity in the wavelength of emission and detection of light and the possibility of its fine-tuning through the nanotube structure. In addition, bolometer and optoelectric memory devices have been realized on ensembles of single-walled carbon nanotubes. Crystallographic defects also affect the tube's electrical properties. A common result is lowered conductivity through the defective region of the tube. A defect in armchair type tubes which can conduct electricity can cause the surrounding region to become semiconducting and single monatomic vacancies induce magnetic properties. Topic: <laughs> Thermal All nanotubes are expected to be very good thermal conductors along the tube exhibiting a property known as ballistic conduction", but good insulators lateral to the tube axis. Measurements show that an individual SWNT has a room temperature thermal conductivity along its axis of about 3500 Wm-1K-1, compare this to copper, a metal well known for its good thermal conductivity, which transmits 385 Wm-1K-1. An individual SWNT has a room temperature thermal conductivity across its axis in the radial direction of about 1.52 Wm-1 K-1, which is about as thermally conductive as soil. Macroscopic assemblies of nanotubes such as films or fibers have reached up to 1500 Wm-1 K-1 so far. The temperature stability of carbon nanotubes is estimated to be up to 2,800 degrees Celsius in vacuum and about 750 degrees Celsius in air. Crystallographic defects strongly affect the tube's thermal properties. Such defects lead to phonon scattering, which in turn increases the relaxation rate of the phonons. This reduces the mean free path and reduces the thermal conductivity of nanotube structures. Phonon transport simulations indicate that substitutional defects such as nitrogen or boron will primarily lead to scattering of high-frequency optical phonons. However, larger-scale defects such as stone whales defects cause phonon scattering over a wide range of frequencies, leading to a greater reduction in thermal conductivity. Topic. Synthesis Techniques have been developed to produce nanotubes in sizable quantities, including arc discharge, laser ablation, chemical vapor deposition and high-pressure carbon monoxide disproportionation among these arc discharge, laser ablation, chemical vapor deposition CVD are batch-by-batch -batch process and HIPCO is gas phase continuous process. Most of these processes take place in a vacuum or with process gases. The CVD growth method is popular, as it yields high quantity and has a degree of control over diameter, length and morphology. 
Using particulate catalysts, large quantities of nanotubes can be synthesized by these methods, but achieving the repeatability becomes a major problem with CVD growth. The HIPCO process advances in catalysis and continuous growth are making CNTs more commercially viable. The HIPCO process helps in producing high-purity single-walled carbon nanotubes in higher quantity. The HIPCO reactor operates at high temperature 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius and high pressure approximately 30 to 50 bars. It uses carbon monoxide as the carbon source and nickel, iron pentacarbonyl as catalyst. These catalyst acts as the nucleation site for the nanotubes to grow. Vertically aligned carbon nanotube arrays are also grown by thermal chemical vapor deposition. A substrate, quartz, silicon, stainless steel, etc., is coated with a catalytic metal, Fe, Co, Ni layer. Typically, that layer is iron, and is deposited via sputtering to a thickness of 1 to 5 nanometers. A 10 to 50 nanometers underlayer of alumina is often also put down on the substrate first. This imparts controllable wetting and good interfacial properties. When the substrate is heated to the growth temperature, approximately 700 degrees Celsius, the continuous iron film breaks up into small islands. Each island then nucleates a carbon nanotube. The sputtered thickness controls the island size, and this in turn determines the nanotube diameter. Thinner iron layers drive down the diameter of the islands, and they drive down the diameter of the nanotubes grown. The amount of time that the metal island can sit at the growth temperature is limited, as they are mobile, and can merge into larger but fewer islands. Annealing at the growth temperature reduces the site density number of CNT per square millimeter while increasing the catalyst diameter. The as prepared carbon nanotubes always have impurities such as other forms of carbon amorphous carbon, fullerene, etc. and non-carbonaceous impurities metal pays used for catalyst. These impurities need to be removed to make use of the carbon nanotubes in applications. Topic. Metrology There are many metrology standards and reference materials available for carbon nanotubes, for single-wall carbon nanotubes, ISO, TS 10868 describes a measurement method for the diameter, purity, and fraction of metallic nanotubes through optical absorption spectroscopy, while ISO, TS 10797 and ISO, TS 10798 establish methods to characterize the morphology and element Elemental composition of single wall carbon nanotubes, using transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy respectively, coupled with energy dispersive X ray spectrometry analysis. NIST SRM 2483 is a soot of single wall carbon nanotubes used as a reference material for elemental analysis, and was characterized using thermogravimetric analysis, prompt gamma activation analysis, induced neutron activation analysis analysis, inductively coupled plasma mass spectroscopy, resonant Raman scattering, UV visible near infrared fluorescence spectroscopy and absorption spectroscopy, scanning electron microscopy, and transmission electron microscopy. The Canadian National Research Council also offers a certified reference material SWCNT1 for elemental analysis using neutron activation analysis and inductively coupled plasma mass spectroscopy. NIST ERM 8281 is a mixture of three lengths of single wall carbon nanotube. For multi wall carbon nanotubes, ISO TR 10929 identifies the basic properties and the content of impurities, while ISO TS 11888 describes morphology using scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, viscometry, and light scattering analysis. ISO, TS 10798 is also valid for multiwall carbon nanotubes. Topic. K 
Chemical modification Carbon nanotubes can be functionalized to attain desired properties that can be used in a wide variety of applications. The two main methods of carbon nanotube functionalization are covalent and non-covalent modifications. Because of their apparent hydrophobic nature, carbon nanotubes tend to agglomerate hindering their dispersion in solvents or viscous polymer melts. The resulting nanotube bundles or aggregates reduce the mechanical performance of the final composite. The surface of the carbon nanotubes can be modified to reduce the hydrophobicity and improve interfacial adhesion to a bulk polymer through chemical attachment. Also, surface of carbon nanotubes can be fluorinated or halofluorinated by CVD method with fluorocarbons, hydro or halofluorocarbons by heating while in contact of such carbon material with fluoroorganic substance to form partially fluorinated carbons, so-called fluocar materials, with grafted halo fluoroalkyl functionality. Topic. Applications Topic. Current Current use and application of nanotubes has mostly been limited to the use of bulk nanotubes, which is a mass of rather unorganized fragments of nanotubes. Bulk nanotube materials may never achieve a tensile strength similar to that of individual tubes, but such composites may, nevertheless, yield strengths sufficient for many applications. Bulk carbon nanotubes have already been used as composite fibers in polymers to improve the mechanical, thermal and electrical properties of the bulk product. Easton Bell Sports, Inc. have been in partnership with Zyvex Performance Materials, using CNT technology in a number of their bicycle components, including flat and riser handlebars, cranks, forks, seatposts, stems and aero bars. Zyvex Technologies has also built a 54 feet maritime vessel, the Piranha Unmanned Surface Vessel, as a technology demonstrator for what is possible using CNT technology. CNTs help improve the structural performance of the vessel, resulting in a lightweight 8,000 pounds boat that can carry a payload of 15,000 pounds over a range of 2,500 miles. Amroy Europe Oi manufactures hyptonite carbon nanoepoxy resins where carbon nanotubes have been chemically activated to bond to epoxy, resulting in a composite material that is 20% to 30% stronger than other composite materials. It has been used for wind turbines, marine paints and a variety of sports gear such as skis, ice hockey sticks, baseball bats, hunting arrows, and surfboards. The Boeing company has patented the use of carbon nanotubes for structural health monitoring of composites used in aircraft structures. This technology will greatly reduce the risk of an in-flight failure caused by structural degradation of aircraft. Surrey Nanosystems synthesizes carbon nanotubes to create Vantablack. Other current applications include tips for atomic force microscope probes in tissue engineering, carbon nanotubes can act as scaffolding for bone growth. Current research for modern applications include using carbon nanotubes as a scaffold for diverse microfabrication techniques, energy dissipation in self organized nanostructures under influence of an electric field, using carbon nanotubes for environmental monitoring due to their active surface area and their ability to absorb gases. Jack Andraka used carbon nanotubes in his pancreatic cancer test. His method of testing won the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair Gordon E. Moore Award in the spring of 2012. 3. Topic. Potential The strength and flexibility of carbon nanotubes makes them of potential use in controlling other nanoscale structures, which suggests they will have an important role in nanotechnology engineering. 
The highest tensile strength of an individual multi-walled carbon nanotube has been tested to be 63 GPa. Carbon nanotubes were found in Damascus steel from the 17th century, possibly helping to account for the legendary strength of the swords made of it. Recently, several studies have highlighted the prospect of using carbon nanotubes as building blocks to fabricate three-dimensional macroscopic greater than one millimeter in all three dimensions all carbon devices. Lawani et al. have reported a novel radical-initiated thermal crosslinking method to fabricated macroscopic, freestanding, porous, all-carbon scaffolds using single and multi-walled carbon nanotubes as building blocks. These scaffolds possess macro, micro, and nano structured pores, and the porosity can be tailored for specific applications. These 3D all carbon scaffolds, architectures may be used for the fabrication of the next generation of energy storage, supercapacitors, field emission transistors, high performance catalysis, photovoltaics, and biomedical devices and implants. CNTs are potential candidates for future via and wire material in nano-scale VLSI circuits. Eliminating electromigration reliability concerns that plague today's CU interconnects, isolated single and multi-wall CNTs can carry current densities in excess of 1000 MA per square cm without electromigration damage. Large quantities of pure CNTs can be made into a freestanding sheet or film by surface engineered tape casting SETC fabrication technique which is a scalable method to fabricate flexible and foldable sheets with superior properties. Another reported form factor is CNT fiber aka filament, by wet spinning. The fiber is either directly spun from the synthesis pot or spun from pre-made dissolved CNTs. Individual fibers can be turned into a yarn. Apart from its strength and flexibility, the main advantage is making an electrically conducting yarn. The electronic properties of individual CNT fibers i.e. bundle of individual CNT are governed by the two-dimensional structure of CNTs. The fibers were measured to have a resistivity only one order of magnitude higher than metallic conductors at 300 K. By further optimizing the CNTs and CNT fibers, CNT fibers with improved electrical properties could be developed. CNT based yarns are suitable for applications in energy and electrochemical water treatment when coated with an ion exchange membrane. Also, CNT based yarns could replace copper as a winding material. Pyrohanen et al. 2015 have built a motor using CNT winding. Topic. Safety and health The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health is the leading United States federal agency conducting research and providing guidance on the occupational safety and health implications and applications of nanotechnology. Early scientific studies have indicated that some of these nanoscale particles may pose a greater health risk than the larger bulk form of these materials. In 2013, NIOSH published a current intelligence bulletin detailing the potential hazards and recommended exposure limit for carbon nanotubes and fibers. As of October 2016, single wall carbon nanotubes have been registered through the European Union's Registration, Evaluation, Authorization and Restriction of Chemicals reach regulations, based on evaluation of the potentially hazardous properties of SWCNT. Based on this registration, SWCNT commercialization is allowed in the EU up to 10 metric tons. Currently, the type of SWCNT registered through REACH is limited to the specific type of single wall carbon nanotubes manufactured by Ocesial, which submitted the application. Topic. History The true identity of the discoverers of carbon nanotubes is a subject of some controversy. 
A 2006 editorial written by Mark Monthu and Vladimir Kuznetsov in the journal Carbon described the interesting and often misstated origin of the carbon nanotube. A large percentage of academic and popular literature attributes the discovery of hollow, nanometer-sized tubes composed of graphitic carbon to Sumio Ijima of NEC in 1991. He published a paper describing his discovery which initiated a flurry of excitement and could be credited by inspiring the many scientists now studying applications of carbon nanotubes. Though Ijima has been given much of the credit for discovering carbon nanotubes, it turns out that the timeline of carbon nanotubes goes back much further than 1991. In 1952, L. V. Radushkovich and V. M. Lukyanovich published clear images of 50 nanometer diameter tubes made of carbon in the Soviet Journal of Physical Chemistry. This discovery was largely unnoticed, as the article was published in Russian, and Western scientists' access to Soviet press was limited during the Cold War. Monthu and Kuznetsov mentioned in their Carbon editorial, the fact is, Radushkovich and Lukyanovich, should be credited for the discovery that carbon filaments could be hollow and have a nanometer size diameter, that is to say for the discovery of carbon nanotubes. In 1976, Morinobu Endo of CNRS observed hollow tubes of rolled-up graphite sheets synthesized by a chemical vapor growth technique. The first specimens observed would later come to be known as single-walled carbon nanotubes SWNTs. Endo, in his early review of vapor phase grown carbon fibers VPCF, also reminded us that he had observed a hollow tube, linearly extended with parallel carbon layer faces near the fiber core. This appears to be the observation of multi-walled carbon nanotubes at the center of the fiber. The mass-produced MWCNTs today are strongly related to the VPGCF developed by Endo. In fact, they call it the Endo process. Out of respect for his early work and patents, in 1979, John Abramson presented evidence of carbon nanotubes at the 14th Biennial Conference of Carbon at Pennsylvania State University. The conference paper described carbon nanotubes as carbon fibers that were produced on carbon anodes during arc discharge. A characterization of these fibers was given as well as hypotheses for their growth in a nitrogen atmosphere at low pressures. In 1981, a group of Soviet scientists published the results of chemical and structural characterization of carbon nanoparticles produced by a thermocatalytical disproportionation of carbon monoxide. Using TEM images and XRD patterns, the authors suggested that their carbon multi-layer tubular crystals were formed by rolling graphene layers into cylinders. They speculated that by rolling graphene layers into a cylinder, many different arrangements of graphene hexagonal nets are possible. They suggested two possibilities of such arrangements, circular arrangement armchair nanotube and a spiral, helical arrangement chiral tube. In 1987, Howard G. Tennant of Hyperion Catalysis was issued a U.S. patent for the production of cylindrical discrete carbon fibrils with a constant diameter between about 3.5 and about 70 nanometers length 102 times the diameter, and an outer region of multiple essentially continuous layers of ordered carbon atoms and a distinct inner core. Ijima's discovery of multi-walled carbon nanotubes in the insoluble material of arc burned graphite rods in 1991 and Mintmeyer, Dunlap, and White's independent prediction that if single-walled carbon nanotubes could be made, then they would exhibit remarkable conducting properties helped create the initial buzz that is now associated with carbon nanotubes. Nanotube research accelerated greatly following the independent discoveries by Bethune at IBM and Ijima at NEC of single-walled carbon nanotubes and methods to specifically produce them by adding transition metal catalysts to the carbon in an arc discharge. 
The arc discharge technique was well known to produce the famed Buckminster fullerene on a preparative scale, and these results appeared to extend the run of accidental discoveries relating to fullerenes. The discovery of nanotubes remains a contentious issue. Many believe that Ijima's report in 1991 is of particular importance because it brought carbon nanotubes into the awareness of the scientific community as a whole. See also